Hello again and welcome to Tacoma Cyclist. I am a dumbass. <laughs> Hello and welcome again to Tacoma Cyclist. I am the Tacoma Cyclist and with me as always is the Boogeyman. Today we're introducing a new segment. Instead of just doing rides, uh, we're going to start introducing reviews of products you might buy online or at your local bike shop. For our first review, we're actually going to review a shoe uh, that's a uh, relatively higher-end racing shoe. Uh, it's made by Giro. It's the ProLite SLX2. This shoe, we're going to do an unboxing, and we're going to demonstrate uh, what it is, why it's important, why it's special, and what's cool about it, and what's maybe not cool about it. First, we're going to do the unboxing. You actually get a manual for shoes. I'm not exactly sure what that's for, but uh, I'm sure it has something to do with how you put your cleats on. And then, of course, you get some cleat bolts. In this case, you get a pretty nice little uh, shoe bag to go along with it. I don't really see myself keeping the shoes in the bag, per se, but certainly carrying stuff to and from races is going to be nice. One really nice feature in this bag, and something that comes with these shoes, is their uh, evolution or... Uh, Call exactly what they call these things, but these are their uh, custom inserts. Now, I've actually purchased a pair of these for my other racing shoes uh, and find that I really like them. The nice thing about them is that they're customizable, so you can change the size of the arch in the shoe. In this case, it's got the small one. Uh, in my case, uh, I've got kind of really flat feet, uh, my right foot being worse than my left, and actually, I like a higher arch on my right foot. So, in this case, I can actually put the higher arch on my right foot, put the lower arch on my left foot and it's completely customizable. So it actually came with these. These were about 40 bucks if you were to buy them online, uh, but it came with those for free. In this particular case, I, may have, I, I believe I spent around $200 for these shoes on sale, but they're typically around the three to 350 price range. Uh, in my case, I got Traffic Cone Orange. Uh, it doesn't get much brighter than that. Uh, just so happens that I'm looking at uh, outfitting a new bike with uh, a black and orange color scheme, and this happens to work well. Plus my uh, team kit is red and yellow, and it kind of looks orange from a distance just because of those combinations. So this shoe is uh, going to match pretty well with that. Certainly will get you some attention on the road too. Carbon sole, uh, no flex to this thing. This thing does not give. It's the Easton EC90 uh, carbon sole. Overall, an incredibly lightweight shoe. Uh, this particular shoe, and I have a scale here, we'll weigh that here shortly. Uh, weighs in incredibly light, especially because it doesn't have any fancy buckle system. Uh, I know that a lot of people like the BOA system on these. I do have a couple pairs of shoes that have the BOA system. Uh, this does not. This is good old-fashioned Velcro. It's a solid feeling Velcro. It doesn't feel like it's going to give way anytime soon. Uh, and it is uh, pretty adjustable overall, which makes it nice. I can adjust just the toe box, I can adjust the top, and I can adjust the, upper, uh, the lower part of the ankle uh, independently, which is nice. Uh, so I'll shortly show you the upsides and the downsides of these. I will say that in this particular shoe, uh, I had to go with a size 45, which equates to about an 11 to an 11 and a half. In male shoe, typically I wear a 10, and a half, 10 to 10 and a half. Uh, so for this shoe, I had to go a little bit on the uh, higher side for sizing. I actually bought a 44 and a half first, and it was just way too tight, particularly in the toe region. So this is the 45. It definitely fits a lot better. And I, I'll compare it shortly with athletic socks as well as cycling socks. Okay, what we're looking at here is a gram scale, a standard gram scale that helps me to measure uh, the weight of these shoes as well as any other components that I want to weigh. And in most of my reviews, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to weigh these. Sometimes uh, weights don't really matter, but certainly people uh, do care about those weights. So in this case, the shoe is advertised at 240 grams online per shoe. And as you can see here, it's actually kind of waffling back and forth between 238 and 239 grams. And that's with the standard sole in place. So it's probably around 238.5 since it kind of keeps waffling back and forth between the two. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sole out that's in it. This is the stock sole that's in it. I'm going to take it out and replace it with the upper end sole. And I'm just going to set that right next to it on the gram scale. So you gain about eight ounce, or eight grams rather, by putting the uh, higher end soles in those shoes. Still a very light shoe in comparison. Uh, this doesn't have any cleats on it, it's just bare. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a standard Shimano SPDSL type cleat on the scale as well, just to see what it's going to weigh if you were to put a pair of cleats on that. So 264, 265 grams. That includes the upper end footbed and the uh, SPDSL style cleat, which is about average for cleat weight, unless you're talking something like the uh, uh, speed plays, which tend to be a lot heavier cleats, of course. So 264, 265 grams for a shoe, so about 530 grams for the pair. Definitely not bad. Well, you're certainly going to get noticed in traffic in these. They're a very bright orange color, there's no mistaking that. In fact, on the websites when I looked at these shoes, they looked somewhat more subdued than that. Uh, almost shocking to see how much more orange they are in person than they were on the website. But you know what? I actually don't mind it. It's not one of those oranges that uh, is absolutely terrible. You put this with a flashy bike kit and it's going to look pretty good. Now overall, the shoe itself is a pretty solid shoe. It feels great on the foot. Uh, it doesn't have any hot spots. Uh, one of the things that I don't like about some of the BOA systems that I use is that in particular areas, it can kind of give a little bit of a strangling sensation, which after two, three, four hours on the bike, can certainly start to feel like it's uh, maybe uh, putting a little too much pressure in one particular area. In this particular case, one of the things that I do notice that I don't like is the fact that the Velcro tends to hang off a little bit. So there's, uh, when, when I properly fasten this down, there's a little bit of flap there. Uh, it's not something that, that is a deal breaker for me, but it's something that I just, it's something that I'm gonna notice. I'm sure somebody could claim that you're probably losing a watt or two because of this. I don't really care about that. I just care because I don't really care for the looks. Uh, I would trim it cut it off myself, but to be honest with you, I think that doing that would actually make it look worse. So I'll just try to figure out if I can find a way to uh, maybe pin that down or, or, you know, work it so that I can bend that. It feels like over time it, it is going to start to maybe conform more to the shoe than it does right now. As you can see right now, I'm wearing uh, typical athletic socks. These are a thicker sock. These are not a, uh, a bicycle sock that uh, is kind of thin and made out of smart wool. This is a traditional cotton, thick gym sock. Uh, which to me is important when I hop on the trainer, I'm not necessarily wanting to put on my full cycling kit. I don't want to necessarily change clothes from head to toe. If I'm hopping on the trainer, maybe I just want to hop on in a pair of shorts and the socks I was wearing today. Maybe I don't want to change my socks. In this particular case, uh, there's nothing that feels binding in the shoes. So having even a regular thicker sock on doesn't feel awkward. When I put a cycling sock on, a thinner sock, like a smart wool sock or something that's specifically designed not to stretch, not to be uh, uh, overly puffy, it doesn't feel like I'm now swimming in the shoe, which a lot of shoes, if you have enough room for an athletic sock, you also now feel uh, like the shoe is, is too open, too roomy for your foot when you put in a uh, cycling sock. And I really attribute that to the fact that you have these three adjustment points here that do a great job of cinching down on the shoe itself. So you can really control the amount of pressure on there. Now, granted, in, in a shoe like this, you can't do the adjustability like you can with the BOA system. You can't be riding along and easily adjust one particular spot. But to be honest with you, I've had BOA system shoes for years now, and I don't really find myself in a situation where I've adjusted my shoes badly to begin with and find myself needing to adjust them later on in the ride. So that's not a big deal to me. Uh, overall, the shoe is incredibly comfortable. There's a nice heel pad on this, uh, also bright orange. It's very rubber. I'm here with no cleats on, on a uh, hardwood floor, and I'm slipping and sliding all over the place. But with the heel pad in place, I can step down comfortably and confidently know that my foot is in the right place and not going to go slipping. Uh, I'm sure once I put a cleat on, it's probably going to change the story a little bit, but that's the case with every shoe. This rubber heel pad is uh, user replaceable as well, so you can take it off and put on a new heel pad if you wish to. Okay, so we know how I feel about these shoes. Uh, from their appearance, from their weight, from their overall styling. Uh, overall, I think this is a great shoe. So the next thing to do is to ride them. The only problem is it's Seattle in the middle of rainy season, and these are brand new shoes, and I really don't want to mess them up. So what I'm going to do is test these on the trainer and see about a report back on those. So stay tuned for a report on the actual rideability of these shoes, how they hold up over the course of several hours on a training session, uh, whether my feet are killing me, whether my feet love it, uh, or whether I'm indifferent. So far, I like these shoes. They look great. They will match my kit just fine. They'll match the new bike that I'm building, which is gonna have a nice bright orange bar tape to go along with it and match these beautifully. Uh, and they feel very comfortable. Uh, I've been in them now for quite a while. Uh, my feet don't have any hot spots. They don't feel like they need to flex. They don't feel like they're sliding around. Overall, these things feel great. So, so far, so good. Check back shortly, and I'll talk to you about how they feel after I ride in them.
Thanks.